as invigorating as it is to take a bold step and put your all into something, the um, looming cloud of failure is enough to make us want to hide away in a comfortable bubble to live out the rest of our unintriguing yet safe lives. The personal obstacles that hinder us make these ambitious steps seem even more daunting and more oftentimes than not skew our perception of the possibility of success. Now, personally, I have a complicated relationship with putting myself out there. Speaking, acting, performing for people is my passion. However, the um, reemergence of an old speech impediment has made my activities increasingly difficult these past few years. Amanda Gorman knows as well as anyone the heights of success and the humbling failures. Like me, she herself grew up with a speech impediment as well as an auditory processing disorder. And those two things combined made her dreams of performing seem unobtainable. Despite this, at the age of 22, she landed herself the role of Joe Biden's inaugural poet in 2020, making herself the youngest in history to do so. She's an award-winning author, a Harvard graduate, and a phenomenal poet. She shared her own story of ambition and failure on February 3rd of 2021 in Boston, Massachusetts. At a live event for The Moth, an organization that hosts live storytelling events that connect communities and expand ideologies, Ms. Gorman recounts an early experience in her career that helped mold her into the speaker she is today. Her message to us serves as a reminder that no single failure is reflective of one's skill or potential. If anything, it should push us to work even harder towards our goals. After all, they haven't seen the best of us yet. I now invite you to be inspired by Amanda Gorman's roar. I'm, um, I'm, 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 I'm going to be a mighty king, like, like no king before. Everyone, look left, look right. Everywhere you look, I'm standing in the spotlight. These are the words I repeated to myself as I walked into the LA audition room, where a hundred other girls were trying out to be Nala on Broadway in New York. <laughs> You know, the room smelled of Hollywood and desperation. It was crammed full of these monster moms and their savage children. You have no idea, okay? These kids are like little demons. They'll stick out the foot to trip you, do pirouettes around the room just because they can, randomly do a backflip to show off, whatever. And as I walk in, I am just so glad that I will never be like that. And more importantly, my mom will never be one of those crazy loco stage moms. <laughs> you know, I remember standing in the room and my mom came up to me and she said, you know what, Amanda, don't worry about it. Okay, just have fun and try your best. And you know, I remember I'm standing in the corner of the room and I'm stretching, you know, practicing my moves, getting it on. <laughs> and uh, this other mom walks by me. And she goes, hmm, that's cute, but it's not amateur hour. Yeah, my mom snapped. She goes, hell no, I know you did not to say that to my daughter. The lion of the king grew out. <laughs> Suddenly it was no holds barred. She's out, out, out there yelling nasty comments at the other girls like, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> now I know you other white girls didn't get the memo, but the Lion King takes place in Africa, okay? <laughs> you can't learn melanin, honey. You can't do makeup for that. I am um, in the corner <laughs> trying to pretend my mom isn't my mom, and, and uh, my twin sister's there. She's there not really for emotional support, but to let me know just how much I can fail. She goes, um, yo, I, I, I know you're like nervous to like audition because you have like a speech impediment and everything and like an auditory processing disorder and like you look like the black girl version of Russell Brand, but just try to have fun. My mom says, move out the way. You can have fun when I have my one-way ticket to New York. Mom, what about 
being myself. Being yourself won't get mom. I mean Amanda to the Lion King. Amanda, come over here. There's something you need to learn. You need to put yourself out there. So, when you see the casting director, tell him you've already menstruated. You're post-pubescent. You won't grow. You'll look nine forever. And uh, if that doesn't work, you can, um, I don't know. Oh, act like a monkey. Uh, walk on your hands or some crap like that, and maybe they'll cast you as Rafiki. I'm trying to kind of um, listen to what my mom is saying and also stay sane. And I just remember closing my eyes and feeling that I was so close to my dream. In my head, I saw myself loud and proud on a stage in front of a crowd, proving that a girl who's black and, and skinny and geeky could, could make it to Broadway. What? Oh, well, after a while, they call my number, and I'm reciting those lyrics again as I walk into the room. I'm, 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 I'm going to be a, a mighty king, like, like no king before. I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm working on my roar, I'm trying to be heard, but these words don't sound right. Could I ever be in the spotlight? Oh, well, um, I'm there in front of the casting director and I remember my mom told me, so I say, <clears throat> uh, yo, the good news, I've already had my period, so this is as high as I'm going to get. <laughs> I can stay nala for a really long time, if you know what I mean. Then I said, um, you know, um, I know I already sang that little Mighty King song, but I've got other stuff in me. <clears throat> That's when you're the beachy mama. Then um, I could hear my mom's voice in my head telling me to pull out all the stops and that if worst came to worst, and this was worst at the moment, <laughs> I should, um, you know, walk on my hands, act um, like a monkey. So, so um, I do not lie, I stepped back and walked on my hands out of the audition room. <laughs> True. <laughs> and now I'm out there with the other girls. Everyone is so tense, you know, the monster moms are pushing everyone out of the way so they can hear better. And they start listing the names of the girls who get callbacks. Oh, and I am so excited. And, uh, and, and they haven't called my name yet. And then the casting director comes out. And he says, thank you everyone so much for coming. That is all. And um, I remember feeling so broken by what was supposed to be my big break. But, uh, but my mom came up to me and she said, you know what? It's okay. You had fun. You tried your best. You'll always be Nala in my heart. And now I am so grateful that I will never be one of those girls who made it to Broadway because I'd still make it here. I'd still make it to now, to, to being loud and proud in front of a crowd on a stage where I know I am a mighty king, mightier than before. I may be working on my roar, but look left. Look right, and here I am tonight in the spotlight. Thank you.